watch all my lessons, please check out my website flashbrainanatomy.com. In this lesson, I will talk about the lateral ventricle, but from the cranial view. Uh, in last video, I illustrated the same brain model, but only from the lateral point of view. So here it is. The same brain model like in the last video. The only difference when we were looking from the lateral point of view, we were able to see the inferior horn of the lateral ventricle right here. We cannot see that right now because we see the insular cortex over here and it's covering the inferior horn of the lateral ventricle. Then we were able to see the posterior horn of the lateral ventricle here. This structure is called the calcar avis and this is the bulb of posterior horn of the lateral ventricle. The lateral ventricle, as I said in the last video, is a space filled with the cerebrospinal fluid. This is the posterior horn of the lateral ventricle and this over here is the cella media and this over here is the anterior horn of the lateral ventricle. If we would go all the way here, down there and under the insula, over there we would be able to see the inferior horn of the lateral ventricle. This is the collateral trigonum. I talked about these two horns in the last two videos and you should check out my website flashbrainanatomy.com to see uh, this lesson and to learn more about it. Now we can go back to learn more about other two parts of the lateral ventricle. It's the cella media and the anterior horn of the lateral ventricle. This is the foramen of Monroe. If we go inside of that foramen, we would exit here on the medial side of this model. And I will illustrate this model from the medial point of view in the video about the third ventricle because that is the third ventricle over there. When you enter the foramen here, you exit, you actually enter the third ventricle and you exit the lateral ventricle. To understand this a bit better, just watch the video about the third ventricle of the brain. However, important for the lateral ventricle, this foramen of Monroe represents the border between the cella media over there and the anterior horn. So it starts here and it ends right below the splenium of corpus callosum. You know the corpus callosum, I talked about it, that is the uh, commissure that connects two hemispheres. Those are the fibers that go above these uh, ventricles. And over here somewhere, there is a part called the splenium. And right on that part, that is the place where the cell media ends. So I will just mark the cell media. And this over here was the anterior horn. This over here is the thalamus. And on the thalamus, there is a layer called the lamina affixa. That's why we say that the lamina affixa creates the floor of the cella media. The cella media, it's this part over here, part of the lateral ventricle. And the lamina affixa creates the floor. It is a small ependymal layer on the thalamus. And thalamus is right beneath it. Then the medial wall of this cella media is created by the fornix. Those are the fibers coming from down there from the pes hippocampi and they go all the way to mammillary bodies over there. So these fibers would simply come all, go like this and then enter the brain substance over here. We cannot see where they start here because I already said it's the, in, the inferior horn and we cannot see the inferior horn because of the insula. Then there is a very thin, uh, like a layer, like a membrane called the telacoroidea, connecting the thalamus with the fornix. If we cut it here, if we cut it here, if we make a frontal cut, it would look like this. First we had the thalamus on both sides. Okay, this is the thalamus. Then we had the fornix, on one side fornix and on the other side fornix. At this point, each fornix from the right side and the left side, they are actually attached to each other 
over here over here they are attached that's why I draw them very close to each other here on the thalamus we said that there is a lamina affixa on one side and same on the other side then I illustrated the telacroidea with blue color so this is how it would look like if we make a cut here and what we see here is exactly what we see when we look from above here is the telacroidea here the telacroidea here the fornix over here and the red fornix over here the lamina fixa on the thalamus and the thalamus here is right beneath the lamina fixa so now we see that the medial wall is created by the telechoroidea and the fornix and that's over here the floor is created by the lamina fixa on the thalamus that's over here and the lateral wall is created by the caudate nucleus and that comes over here on both sides okay there are also fibers running here and here on the other side that's exactly right over here and they go like this they go down there and create the roof of the inferior horn and the caudate nucleus over here it also goes the same like the uh, terminal stria and follows it and it also becomes thinner and thinner and down there it also creates the part of the roof of the inferior horn so we have the lateral wall created by caudate nucleus the floor by media, and the medial wall by fornix and telacroidea but the roof is created by corpus callosum as I mentioned already many times corpus callosum are simply fibers that connect two hemispheres and they go over they go over the lateral ventricles the fornix is attached to the corpus callosum and this part is called the septum pellucidum it is what separates one lateral ventricle from another so this is one lateral ventricle and the same lateral ventricle on the other side first lateral ventricle and the second lateral ventricle then over here we also have the telacroidea and underneath that there is a third ventricle this part over here is the telodiencephalic fissure and as I mentioned before this foramen of Monroe if you would enter that foramen you would simply go through some kind of tunnel to the third ventricle it is so created that we could also enter another lateral ventricle so through that foramen of Monroe we can go through one and to another ventricle it is what connects first second and third ventricle of the brain now before we continue with this lesson there is something really important you should do and that is to check out my website flashbrainanatomy.com check out my software and all my lessons now I will talk about the anterior horn and that is the horn over here that we can see so the lateral wall is created by the head of caudate nucleus as I mentioned before this is the caudate nucleus this boat over here is the foramen of Monroe from there the cell media begins now it is very interesting how all other borders of the anterior horn are made by the corpus callosum now if I illustrate the lateral ventricle from the lateral point of view this would be the inferior horn the posterior horn over here and then the anterior horn okay so the inferior horn over here and it's down here and the posterior horn over here 
and the cell media here and the anterior horn over here. So as I mentioned before, there is a corpus callosum, the fibers going over the ventricle. And here they start going downwards. So we have these fibers going over this lateral ventricle. And at one point they go like this. And the corpus callosum has different names for these parts. This part is called the body of fornix. It creates the border above the lateral ventricle, the anterior horn of the lateral ventricle. This part is called the genu. It creates the border of the lateral ventricle on the front. This part over here is called the rostrum and it creates the border of the lateral ventricle on the caudal side. So all these borders are created by for corpus callosum and we also had borders created by foramen of Monroe and the border of the lateral wall created by the head of the caudate nucleus. Now if we go back to cello media, there is just one thing I missed out and I want to show you that again. Right here on choroid tela, there is a choroid plexus. It is a plexus created of the modified ependymal cells. It creates the cerebrospinal fluid that goes from the choroid plexus to the ventricular system. Actually, this is what produces the cerebrospinal fluid. That's why we have the cerebrospinal fluid inside of lateral ventricles. And the choroid plexus here would look something like this, okay? Attached to the telechoroidea and same on the other side. Remember when I drawn the foramen of Monroe? It goes like this. Well, the choroid plexus also goes inside of foramen Monroe from one side and from another side and then it exits in the third ventricle. And then we have the choroid plexus in the third ventricle too. The choroid plexus goes all the way down there to the posterior horn. To see how choroid plexus looks in details and to learn more about the brain anatomy, please make sure you check out my software and my website flashbrainanatomy.com.